it's all ego. You're operating from a place of your fucking ego. And your fucking ego just will just destroy things, man. Because like what you said, it's that that that, that instant gratification. Okay, what's next? All right, let's get to it. Helen Mirren defends playing Golda Meir after receiving backlash. I told the director, I'm not Jewish. Well, RMB has, has had some words about this. Um, and, and you are Jewish. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, so so here's the thing. Golda Meir was one of the prime minister of, of, of Israel, is a revered figure. Um, you know, the Steven Spielberg's movie Munich dealt with the assassination of the Israeli Olympic team by PLO terrorists. And mm -hmm. um, Golda Meir was a figure in that. So Helen Mirren is playing Golda Meir, you know, in this mm -hmm. movie, which, by the way, I've actually seen and I loved it. Uh, and Helen Mirren crushes it. Now, mm -hmm. what I don't understand in our weird world is like I've always given the example back in the 90s, Tom Hanks played a gay man dying of AIDS in Jonathan Demme's Philadelphia, mm -hmm. the movie. He won an mm -hmm. Academy Award for that role. Jonathan Demme himself, who directed like Silence of the Lambs, I believe Jonathan Demme was gay. And that's one of the reasons he wanted to direct this film. And Denzel Washington plays a lawyer who defends uh, Tom Hanks against his own company that kicked him out, the law firm that kicked him out. Mm -hmm. Tom Hanks is neither gay nor did he have AIDS. But he won an Academy Award for that performance, and he was stunning in that movie. Now, here's the thing about that movie, Philadelphia, with its Bruce, Bruce Springsteen theme song. Mm. In the early 90s, that movie did more, I think, to promote knowledge and sympathy amongst people uh, because it had the very the, having Tom Hanks, you know, America, um, a, a man that everybody Amer America loved, and it made his character sympathetic. And the plight of what so many Americans were going through during the height of the AIDS epidemic, it mm -hmm. really gave a sympathetic portrayal. And, you know, the story was really great because Denzel Washington had his own prejudices that he was working through. His character, yep. And, you know, once again, he uh, he can do no wrong. And mm -hmm. it was a really well done film and really sympathetic. And that movie, I think, really went a long way toward turning the tide of people's opinions on not just uh, gay men, gay America, but also um, just in general, in terms of being more tolerant of people and realizing humanizing people that a lot of the time ignorance has caused many people from understanding that they're normal people as well they deserve mm -hmm. our sympathy and our respect so nowadays you know the online uh twitterati would get their knickers in a bunch and scream that how dare tom hanks play a gay man right. and, and it's like Okay, first of all, that movie did far more good than any harm it did. And the thing is, it would never have been made had a, a, a someone of Tom Hanks' stature and box office. It never would have been made if a person like Tom Hanks wasn't in the lead role. Because you have to get somebody to put up the millions of dollars. They have to get their millions of dollars back. And when you have Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington together... That's mm -hmm. a box office, you know, for a difficult subject matter. That's going to that's going to get people into the theater. And it did. And it did. And it did. And, and it, it was did. national. It was an, and it was uh, part of the discourse for a while. Yeah, and this is why I think that the 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 madness of the modern age actors, by definition, are playing characters that they are not. That's what their jo job is. That's what an actor does to play a character that they are not. Mm -hmm. And it's just odd to me that people want now, they want an actor to have some, like if you want to play a gay man, you have to be a gay man. Or mm. if you want to play a trans person, you have to be trans. But the right. thing is, you know, there's also the business reality of making a movie. If someone's going to, like, if it doesn't matter what kind of a movie you make. The first thing people ask you is not, well, is your lead actor going to play somebody that they are? Mm -hmm. They want to know, is your lead actor, can they bring can they put butts in the seats and make money? That's, and that's that's what people want. Who are you going to cast in this role? So people want to see them. 
Right. You have to understand the, the business end of that, 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 that this is commerce and art. But now we live in this strange, weird performance activist world where people are, I mean, people forget like at the Globe Theater when Shakespeare was first writing his plays, they didn't allow women to perform. So mm -hmm. all the female roles were being played by men. And it's an odd thing to me that nowadays, like, why would you want an actor because because the idea, if if I were to hire, if, if like I'm not an actor, but if somebody was going to play me in a movie, I would want somebody who was a great actor to play me. I wouldn't want to play me yeah. because I wouldn't do a good job on screen. I would want a, an actor whose job it is to act, who understands how to act, to, to do the best job playing me possible. Uh, I want to read this because it, it, it all has to do with, this modern era, which is just really ruining creativity, ruining so many things, uh, r &B. Um, Dame Maureen Lipman, I guess, argued that ethnicity should be prioritized in roles like this. She said, I do believe in it's a discussion that has to be had. It's utterly legitimate. You know, if someone who's not Jewish can't play Jewish, does someone who plays who's Jewish play someone that's not Jewish? Uh, it happens every day. Yeah. <laughs> well, and people are talking about, for instance, Bradley Cooper, who directed yes. the new movie Maestro. Uh, right. That's about Leonard Bernstein. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of controversy that he, they ca called it saying, you know, wearing Jew face because he put on oh. a larger uh, nose. And, you know, the funny thing is when everyone anyone's doing makeup for a movie, you, you're, you, you wear lots of things, noses, you wear different facial appliances to look more like the person you're playing. I think you still need to have some kind of a quality of the character. Some people go, well, Rob, like, do you think that a, a white person should play a black role? Well, no, because you still want the role to be believable, believable. for an audience. Yeah. Right. I and had so, said this. I'm sorry to interrupt. I had okay. said, because someone said, well, you know, the same Lipman idiot said, you know, well, Ben Kingsley couldn't play Nelson Mandela. I'm like, of course not, you moron, because it's out of his range. But his range, he can play. He has played everything, right? And yeah, that's of course. what you want our actors to do. You want all our actors to be able to play everything they can in their range. But what, what I find so strange is we now live in a world where people who that are going to go after somebody, my question is, what do you hope to achieve? I see everybody going, me, 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 me. Recognize me now. I yes. want to be recognized. Recognize me. You have to treat me exactly the way I want to be treated. Mm. And I'm like, well, I never thought, that, like growing up, when I stepped out on my front porch <laughs> to go out into the world, I knew that I didn't expect the world to bend to my wishes. I knew that the big bad world out there was going to pummel me in the face. And I needed to be ready for it. You know, I needed to be... I needed to be smart. I needed to be self-aware. I needed to be ever vigilant. I also needed to know how to talk to people, relate to people. And I understand, I had to understand how to roll with the punches and to be out there and realize that I cannot expect the world to know anything about me. I need to be able to deal with the world. And it's kind of the script is flipped. Now, everybody wants the world to deal with them the way they want to be dealt with. Who, who gets to decide who plays who? Right. So uh, you behind the, the, the keyboard in your upside down world with what you just said, Robert, uh, that we have to please you, because once we do, you're not going to be happy. It's on to your next right. agenda. You know, and you don't really care. You it's don't just care. something you're getting. You don't your, care at all. <laughs> you get to have some some you get to have like a, you get the satisfaction of other people going, good job, man. You stuck it to him or stuck it to them or stuck it to whomever. Right. And, and, and what, right. Right. And, and what have I, you done? What have you created? You've stopped you created? something from being created. You've stopped you people from creating. Yeah. You, you actually did the opposite. You destroyed some, some, some creative process, something that could have been right. That, that the results of that creative process could have touched hundreds, thousands, mm -hmm. tens of millions of people like a movie like Philadelphia did. Mm -hmm. And who knows what good that story by being oh. told on a large scale could have done for the world at large and the very people that need that kind of representation. You know, and Lipman and all the goofballs, uh, you know, that that do this activist, um, you know, activism behind the keyboard uh, or in a stupid um, um, 
uh, interview. What have you created? What have what opportunities? What doors have you opened up for, uh, for lack of better words, people of color, uh, to where they have careers, still to this day that Taylor Hackford, Helen Miriam, David Ayer, are responsible for. They walk the walk. What have you guys done? 